Today, we're going to cover creating Power BI reports that showcase images. Now, Numero actually released two report templates recently that include images. So we're going to take a look at both of those specifically. First, we're going to cover a few things. We'll start with discussing use cases for using images in reports. We'll then talk about how to configure the data on the back end to make sure those images are showing up correctly in your reports. We'll then look at images in data tables and multi-row cards. These are the two report templates that Numero released, so we'll walk through those specifically. Then we're going to talk about using image slicers to filter these reports with images. And then we'll end on a discussion for best practices on using images in mobile view. Now, there are so many use cases for why you might want to put images in reports, but we're going to cover some of the ones we see most commonly at Numero. You know, this is not comprehensive of all the use cases out there. It could be as simple as you're grouping data by a country and you think it would be a little more visually easy to understand if the country flag image was there to designate data grouped or associated to a particular country. You know, these are just ones that we see commonly at Numero, and our templates are actually based around this idea of ranking facilities by a cleanliness score. You know, there are a lot of organizations that work in this space that are responsible for the upkeep of a building, a store, a hotel, whatever it might be, that it's hard to verify if something was cleaned or up to that organization's standards without having a visual photo of the location. So we'll dig more into this one in particular when we start looking at Numero's templates. You know, we also see a lot of verification of safety procedures in the field. There's just many things that happen uh, in a field-based organization where you have a crew of workers that are out doing stuff on site every day that's hard to verify without photo capture showing what that, what that you know, procedure looks like or what's being followed, what's actually happening in the field. So when we include those images in a report, it can really bring light to possibly, you know, some of these business practices or just day-to-day -day operations that really we didn't have visibility into prior to capturing those photos and moving them into a BI dashboard and taking a look at them. You know, we also see um, displaying receipts of processed invoices commonly, uh, just confirming the appearance of products and displays in various stores, you know, for customers in the consumer packaged goods space. They have, you know, various things even in your grocery store that are expected to be set up to a particular um, planogram that needs to be followed. And, you know, it's hard to verify whether or not that happened without photo capture. So really, you know, the kind of a summary of all of this is just asset verification via photo capture is probably the use case that we see most often, whether that asset is a physical product in the store, a building that needs to be cleaned, a safety procedure that needs to be followed, you know, really taking a look at what's happening out there in the field and bringing those photos into a report to help aggregate and analyze, you know, whether company standards are being followed. Here we are in Power BI Desktop taking a look at Numero's table template that includes these images. Before we dig too far into this, I do want to take a look at the data configuration that ensures that these images render like this in the data table. So I'm going to navigate over to data. And when we're looking at our logo image column where we have our image URL stored, we want to ensure that this column has a data category of image URL. And what this does is it, it tells the report to show this as the image itself rather than just showcase that specific long string of text that the URL has. And when we talk about these URLs themselves, there's a few things to consider. You know, it has to be in one of these supported file formats to ensure that the image is going to show correctly in the Power BI application. 
Additionally, we want to make sure that these are publicly accessible URLs. So if it is hidden behind some sort of sign-in, not everyone is going to be able to see the images or you know, they're not going to render correctly for everyone that you might want to share the report with. If your images are hosted on SharePoint or OneDrive, you may be able to get an embed code that points directly to them. But in general, you're going to want to use a publicly facing URL. Now, when we talk about the URLs themselves, if, it's, if they're coming from a public website that you may not have access to, there's a little bit of inherent risk in that. Let's say that website goes down, all of these image URLs break, and you're going to be showing a broken link in the data table itself. You know, if possible, it is preferable to host these URLs on your side, whether that's in your database or in some cloud infrastructure tool that you're going to have access to, to just make sure that these are always reliably showing up in your report. Now that we have our data configured correctly, let's take a look at this template. So we're looking at the gallery template light table. Again, we have these image templates available in both a table format and multi-card format. Both are also available in a light and dark mode format. So we're looking at the table and we're in that light mode format. Again, this template follows that first use case we were discussing, you know, scoring a store or a location based on certain criteria and having the image of that location rendered in the report to show us what's going on at that store. This is looking at the outside of sporting goods stores in particular. And when we talk about some of our design choices here, we can see that we have center aligned the images. If you wanted to change that, we could come into formatting, field formatting, and change that alignment to left or right. We just do generally recommend a center alignment as we think it looks pretty clean and nice in the table. Additionally, if we wanted to add some padding to the images itself to add a little bit more space between this top value, we can come into the grid section of our formatting and increase or decrease padding accordingly. So if we didn't want any top line padding there, we can remove that and have that show right under the header bar. You know, really up to you what you want to do. And we do have the image as our first column in the template. Just because we think it's really crucial to this report, you know, these, these stores are being scored based on what's going on in the image. But if you did want, of course, you have the flexibility to move the, that store column or that image column wherever you want. I'm just going to move it to the bottom really quick just to show that, you know, maybe you want to see the, the store name first, then the address, and then the, the image being the last attribute. But in general, we think that, you know, in this particular template, that image is really crucial to evaluating or understanding the score, so we do have it in that first column position. Now here we are taking a look at that multi-row card gallery template. It does look very similar to our table template, but you'll notice that those column headers are no longer there, and we're really looking at a card format here. So if we click into the report, we can see we're using that multi-row card versus that data table. And multi-row cards are really great for this image use case because we can group all of these different data attributes together in a single card. Really dive into a single store and have all that information together, particularly if you're using multiple measures. I know we're only using one cleanliness score here, but multi-row cards are really great if you have multiple measures that you want to showcase about an individual location or an image. And then when we actually get to looking at the mobile template of this, which, you know, that'll be the final section of this tutorial, uh, you'll see some, some real big differences between the multi-row card layout in mobile and the table layout in mobile. Now, here I am in Power BI service versus desktop, but we're still taking a look at that multi-row card gallery template. 
I wanted to showcase that we do have in this navigation panel a slicer panel with a pre-configured slicer by brand. So what this is going to allow us to do if I come in and select Dick Sporting Goods is filter all of our image results down by that particular brand or type of store. So this is really helpful, allows us to quickly analyze images by brand, take a look at those cleanliness scores by brand, maybe identify an outlier or a store that's not performing well in comparison to those that have a really high cleanliness score. And this is configured in both the table gallery template and the multi-row card gallery template. So just saving you time, we have that slicer already built in there to make filtering these results very easy for you. And lastly, let's take a look at the mobile formatting options for both of these templates. Both the multi-row card template and the table template have been optimized for mobile. So all we have to do is come into view and click into mobile layout. Again, we're looking at the multi-row card template right now. So what we're going to see is all of that information grouped together, not in columns, but in that card format. So we have the store image, the store name, the address, the city, the, the, the state, and then that score at the bottom. When we take a look at our table template, these are going to be formatted in actual columns when we go to that mobile view. So again, we'll get that column header with that store, that name, and that score. Now we are missing address and city and state in this view. So one thing to consider with the table versus the multi-row card is that when we are in a table format, we have less space on the mobile device to fit all of our columns. And likely we're going to need to prioritize our top two or three columns that are actually going to fit nicely on that mobile screen versus trying to jam all of that information in, you know, really tiny text across five or six columns. And we just do have less space to work with on mobile. So what our template is doing here is selecting just score name um, store name and score to showcase what we consider to be kind of the most important three columns. But again, that multi-row card can be really beneficial on mobile if you do have the need to see all of those because it's not going to group them in that column format. It's going to make each individual store its own card and showcase all of those attributes. That's it for today's tutorial on creating Power BI reports that showcase images. Now, these new templates are available for download in the Numero Hub. They come with zip files that include not only the templates themselves in both light and dark mode, but also readme instructions on the specifics in the templates and how to leverage the templates. We do appreciate you tuning in. We have a lot of information in the Numero blog, so if you want to read more about design tips, best practices, dark mode, mobile view, check out our blog. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, and we're so thankful that you tuned in today, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.